Previously on Ash of Gods, Redemption Thorn has managed to get himself locked up, and his daughter, Glita, has escaped somewhere into the city. Aversus. Unbeknownst to Thorn and Glita, Hopper Rowley continues his pursuit. Encountering a number of difficulties along the way, we join the party as he encounters yet another travel difficulty on the outskirts of the city where Thorne is currently captive. Finding the key for a tricky lock is sometimes easier than finding the right approach with a person. Dissonant words are like broken tools. It grips his sword tightly. A book lover. Should help the boys deal with the abominations. Just stay here away from the sharp blades. We shrug and dismount to watch the skirmish. Reinforcements are already coming from the city gates, so the ensigns don't stand a chance. A twig cracks, making you turn and unsheath your sword. Another end squad emerges from the nearby forest. Once again, it's Hopper flying solo. distance here. Give everybody a nice slap. Perfect. Them both down like that. Uh. Ick. <laughs> oh shit. Healer. Let's deal with you and those engines. Never seen sword play. Treat wounds as well as you fight. You could 
resurrect the dead or something. Hmm. Can't do that, Ake. Besides, why do you need to reanimate the dead anyway? They're already in the hands of the gods. It's the living we should look after. I cannot believe this. This peppy old man is a healer. You have my respect, sir. Never actually saw Icons fight, and I don't think they'd give you much of a challenge. I'm Shek, commander of the Guard of Ursus, at your service. Mm. Hopper Rowley, in your service. Never encountered an Icon and not eager to. Tempting fate is one thing. Laughing in its face is something else entirely. <clears throat> well said, Hopper. Thanks for your help. Never would have thought I'd have to fend off enemies near my hometown walls. Though it wasn't long ago I was nabbing similar beasts on the Ursus streets. Mm. Uh, Lorenz is in town? Has the Reaping got Ursus too? <clears throat> If messengers are to be believed, it's the same mayhem as in Albius. Not sure if it's the reaping. But many are getting sores on their necks. The bell hasn't stopped ringing for days. No reapers here. Those white masked abominations are popping up like mushrooms. Hmm. Enzes are drawn to the men here. Masked warriors always arrive just before a reaping. For they are its harbingers. They come eagerly rushing to the sacred stones. Then the men here accumulate poison and become deadly. <clears throat> True. Our stone killed some people, too. We allow none near it now. Of course, we forbid even discussing this plight. For now, the ointments the monks bring from the temple's supply do their job. Alleviates some of the pain. Hmm. Judging by the flags, the king is in town. We're not in the capital, though. <sighs> they say war is coming to the western border. In which Burkhanan kingdom will be the first one plunged into the mess? That's right. Juran. Gabona's trouble is business as usual anyway. Besides, the king's old now, and his health's declining. His son, on the other hand, is young and healthy. His Highness is stationed in Ursus, by the way. This is hardly a big city, but it has more resources than Albius, and the price of the population. We even have a royal palace here. Just you wait till Prince Trig comes back. Then it'll all be like it was. Mm. You don't believe this, do you, Shek? Nothing will be as it was anymore, if records of the previous reapings are to be believed. Only one in three women survived, and only one in five men were killed in battle. Mm. I don't want to think of it. What's the point of digging graves and crying over those who still live? Mm. Have you perchance, yeah, have you perchance seen Prince Ho? Thank the gods we found him under the healer's house. He's suffered a wound from an abomination's dagger. Everyone there was thrown into the dungeon, including Thorn Brennan. That didn't make the prince feel much better, though. <sighs> His younger highness is quite impatient. At least he's alive. His majesty is probably worried sick now. Mm. Well, you say Thorn Brennan is in the dungeon. And what of his daughter? Mm. Of course he's in the dungeon. Ron Victi, Thorn's brother in law made sure of that. The girl's vanished, though. Her uncle turned the whole town upside down to no avail. So you know, Brennan, since you were talking about his daughter. <sighs> we have been hot on Captain Brennan's heels since Albius. Could say we know everything about him. We were supposed to bring him back to Prince Ho and arrest the one, all of Prince Trig's behest. Well, nothing left to do now. We didn't make it. It's all for naught. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't care, but I need to get to the dungeon and talk to Thorn Brennan right now. <sighs> what say you, Shek? Book lover wouldn't ask that without reason. This is a short meeting. 
I can attend so you don't feel pressured. Besides, you defeated the abominations, ready to tear into your guards. Mm. You may be right. Besides, you've helped me and saved my men's hides. All right, have it your way. And so, two of our three disparate parties are now occupying the same location at the same time. Interesting. See what's bothering me first. Hmm. Look, Ick, you're going to burn a hole in my head with that stare of yours. Something wrong. Uh. I still don't get why the cart carried you in his arms. You may have undone the sorcerer. You may be quite deft in swinging that sword of yours, but so what? Why would the cart not care? What if I tell you I'm a great scholar, an expert on ancient manuscripts, an interpreter, a translator? For your breed, my friend. Do you think the Cardinal would rather rummage through hundreds of manuscripts, or just ask me for an answer? So, like a walking library or something? Leave that one bit. Answer me this, then. What exactly was that fiend in Albus? Or did it want with trouble? Why is the war with Frisia happening during the reaping? Mm. By the way, Ike, you know the temple looks down on such talk, don't you? <laughs> Maybe they do, but I don't. I'm a temple servant, and I don't do Corazon's bidding or serve those rogue buffoons. My ears are open, my lips are sealed. I swear on my honor. Mm. Why the war with Frieza? <sighs> That's exactly right. Prince Trig sent more patrols westward the moment he heard that the raping was coming. He's never been friends with Frieza, obviously. Why are they at our throats during the raping? Are the gods not bestowing their due share of misfortune? Mm. All right, Ake, I'll answer you. Let's say your prince squabbled with the cardinal. They'd argue and go their separate ways. But if a temple servant squabbled with one of the Frisian kings, the king's head would roll the moment he uttered a word of dissent. <laughs> well, maybe they've got their own way of life. Who knows? Maybe the temple rules their lands, while our kingdom as monarchs try to maintain law and order. Still, Akana doesn't attack Frisia during the reaping. did, Ake. We started it during the first reaping. And when the second reaping struck, the one that ended at the Battle of Drowsy Deep, it was the Burkhanan army that showed up. Those weren't Frisian lands yet. <clears throat> so that's how it is, huh? Burkhanan played dirty with Frisia, and now expects payback during every reaping? Why tell me of the Frisian ways? Hmm. Frisian Temple, the Temple of Divine Wrath, yearns to rid itself of both the Temple of Divine Retribution and Rakana itself. They're the ones truly commanding the Frisian troops. Raping presents a good opportunity to finish off a weakened enemy. So that's how it goes. The raping comes, and Frisia's right on cue. the monster from Albius. Uh. What else can a reaper be but an enemy? You should know your enemies by name. I believe for a second that this reaper of yours doesn't have a name. What do the records reveal about the last reaping? There's nothing about the current reaping in any of the records yet. It makes sense that it was a reaper, although that's just what people call him. 
They considered themselves harbingers, messengers of the gods. There are records of some of them, but I cannot tell you anything about the one in Albius. I haven't seen it. Well, I'll tell you then. It's questioning a merchant. His name's Patagang, I think. The Reaper was tall, half-naked, with gray skin. Dirty hair, just like a shaman's. He's got a bunch of chains and stuff on him. He also held a giant glaive made from a kind of gray metal. Mm. That was Dorbkop, one of the most powerful Reapers. This weapon is the biggest clue. The Hidden Chronicles call him the Butcher of Burkana, the Scourge of Burkana, or, well, he's got many names. Quite a bit of carnage he's dealt throughout the centuries. A ruthless and cunning beast, that one. I understand. Not a monster that powerful even need to be cunning. That's a weapon of the weak. Unless he's not the only one. Chronicles say something else? Don't fret. I'm not telling the temple about this. Mm. I know, Ink. I'm quite good at reading people. I don't think Dork Call needs to be cunning. It's just how he is. Reapers are not to be trusted, however. Not hammer welding, Tibabar, nor Artrak, and his sword and bident, nor anyone else. Did trouble have to die? Uh, Don't tell me. You weren't curious. The monster immobilized everyone. Turned a third of the towns of people against the others. He set the whole town with a plague. Trouble was the only one it directly killed. I climbed to the town halls to get him. Mm. I know why they need the reaping. Because they find nourishment in death torture and pain. More precisely, those things power the sacred stones, imbuing them with healing properties. Now tell me, is it any better to be killed by a friend than an enemy? <sighs> what do you even say? An enemy, of course. But see him try to kill me. A friend who plots against you is no friend at all, wouldn't you say? Much more infuriating who present themselves as enemies from the start. That's how it is. Your hatred, your tears, despite your best efforts to hide them, are just food for the sacred stones. So, if Trobo became that Reaper's servant and started slaughtering the townsfolk, the Reaper would find it quite amusing and satisfying. Praise the gods, Trobo didn't agree to that. Those of royal blood certainly have a lot more fortitude. Take Prince Trig, for instance. What a man. His father was quite a fearless fellow himself. He said his pride. That's why he didn't get on well with his grandson. Mm. We all bleed the same shade of red. Few have survived facing a reaper. Maybe Trouble's heart just couldn't take it. The Gabonan king massacred his subjects. Trig's ancestors, the Juran came too. It didn't matter in the end. They just joined the pile of corpses they created. Guess that's enough for now. Perhaps. A little thing I don't quite get, though. Your words have a ring of truth. And I may be but a simple swordsman. Certainly no scholar. No peasant, either. And I've got a hunch that the temple servants and the reapers are in cahoots. And they're all making a fuss over their precious menus. Ick, this is a pandemonium I don't want to be part of. How can you see me the way you do, at least? Also heard this reaping is the last one. Is that true? Think. What would it take to make this the last battle? No one is to be left alive. Women and children. Only then, maybe. If Dorpakal is on Frisia's side, does Burkana have its own reapers? 
same reapers roaming the north and the south. Mm -hmm. Well, things happen. I know only one thing. The reapers serve no one. Let's go see what's bothering Stein. Listen to me, Stein. I understand the reaping makes times tough. And everyone's feeling resentful toward one another. But what's your problem? Your ulcer's been treated with a potion from the temple. Alive and well. What else do you have to worry about? The only one I resent is myself. Hmm. What provoked your fury? What happened in Albius wasn't so clear-cut. It wasn't the toll collector who attacked me. It was the other way around. I killed Ramlin, too, if you were so fast. And I'd probably take a stab at Thorn, too. What stopped you, Stein? Hmm. Is the bell. I heard it ringing throughout all the essence, like something hit me. I came to my senses. I couldn't believe what I'd done. There's no taking it back. Hmm. So what now, Stein? You don't hear the thumping now, do you? I mean, it's not ringing anymore. <laughs> the bell's ringing, Hopper. No, it is. Even if I don't hear it, I hear that thus incessant thumping in my heart, in my head. I'm still human while it rings. I'm afraid to find out what happens if it stops. Okay, then. Alright, and let's go talk to Thorn. Shek takes you and Abe to Thorn's cell. Thorn, you've got guests. Go greet them. Just keep it short. It's a dungeon, not an inn, after all. No shenanigans, you hear me? I'll be waiting at the exit. Mm. Hello, Thorn. I'll cut to the chase. My name is Hopper Rowan. I'm a healer, a scribe, and something of a sorcerer. Some call me a vagabond. I found myself in Albius a couple days ago and used the lucky coincidence to rid the town of a curse. It wasn't the reaping, though, but an entirely different kind of sorcery. I made quite an impression on Prince Tree, too. Mm. So he hired me to find his son, known by Albius soldiers as Ode. I was also instructed to find you, Thorn Brennan, and hand you over to the closest Burkhanan military governor. I couldn't refuse. Mm. You're a lucky man, Hopper Rowley. What happened in Albius and Ursus is evidence of that. And now here I stand before you, my fate in the King of Jirana's hands. It's just that Hode, Prince Hode, rather, is still unconscious and may very well be at death's door. Hmm. He might still have enough time, right? I've saved many lives and most of them will be on saving. Why so quiet, Aki? You help me get into the palace. Uh. Only Shek can help you with that. Only if he thinks it's absolutely necessary. I'll ask him tomorrow. My execution is tomorrow. I'm charged with murdering Albius guards in dereliction of duty, failing to protect the prince. He was gravely wounded while in my care. Of course, if Poe awakens, the king might be inclined to pardon me, but by then it'll be too late. What else do you want? Mm -hmm. Your daughter, Captain. You need to talk with your daughter. We entered the town together, and then she vanished. Where is she now? Hmm. I like that answer. It's Bron Victi sent you. Hmm. Ron Victi is in Stockett's son, so your brother-in-law then? Why does he have it out for you? With relatives, it's usually about an inheritance. 
personal grudge. Hmm. Knowing every single reason is far less important than dealing with the ramifications. You can't change the past. Better to be fully prepared for what lies ahead. Ron Victi wants my children dead. It even infuriates him that he had nothing to do with my wife's death. Hmm. Guess you'll have to take my word for it. I don't know anything about Ron Victi. Never seen him. We've never spoken. Hmm? Imagine a toad with venomous fangs covered in honey and golden glitter. It won't go wrong. Too old to be chasing girls. Hmm. Am I supposed to laugh? You and your daughter both managed to stand your ground against a reaper, Albius. I can understand why that piques my curiosity. I'm trying to understand what causes the movie and stop it after all. all right. Any temple servant can tell you about the reaping's causes. Stopping is beyond anyone save the gods. You seem too frail to best even me, let alone ache. Reaper. <laughs> I don't know if you'd call him a god or not, but he did bring down Albius Town Hall. The Cardinal carried him out of the rubble himself. The fight's quite impressive though, for a scribe. Even you, Thorne, could learn something. Mm -hmm. I'm no god. Even an ordinary soldier can rebuke an entire army when positioned correctly. <sighs> Saying my daughter is in the right place for your fight? Or is she a weapon for you to defend yourself with? Even if Aang's right about you, why should I entrust you with my daughter's fate? Hmm. Why do you have to? I look like a toll collector to you. I only want to help all of Burkana. You might be able to help me. Oh. I'd like to talk to my dead wife, too. I share your grievances, Thorn. Nobody's getting out of this reaping unscathed. That's how it always has been and will be, as the reapings are stopped for good. I tell you, your son and daughter still live. At least you have someone to pray for. Hmm. Damn them. They just play with people and discard them like toys. They burn them like dead leaves. Where is their wisdom? Their mercy? Hmm. I don't want to judge the gods, Thor. There's no reason for concern, though. You don't seek revenge on every fool or early obscenity as you're going, do you? Has something happened to your son? I see it in your face when you mention him. I don't know yet. Ron Victi said he was in trouble, though I think he was taken hostage somewhere near Phrygia. Perhaps the cannibals got him. Honestly, I'd be just as worried if Ron Victi had gotten his hands on any of my children. Yeah, enough chit chat. Just get me out of here. Mm -hmm. Come to your senses. This prison cannot be destroyed. Besides, Ake can hear us. The only reason he's not voicing his outrage is that he's so mad that he can't speak. I'd rather know how you managed to hold your ground against a reaper. Did your daughter help in any way? Uh. All right, I'll tell you. Yes, Leda helped me keep it together. Couldn't bear the shame of breaking down in her presence. Maybe other factors, too. Not a magician. Reminded me of a similar feeling from many years ago. I saved my father in law from the clutches of the veil. <laughs> that story is the stuff of legend. Since you, no one has dared to approach the edge of existence. Pallians tried using ropes to pull willing daredevils back out. A bunch of bloody corpses were all that ever came back. Until you got in and out, just like that. How do you manage it? Uh. I had to save my father-in-law. The loss might have been too much for my wife, but her was already quite weak. So, off I went. And something happened to me there. Maybe it was passed on to my daughter. Still, I wouldn't have survived if not for my mentor. 
Trevor died and helped me escape. Hmm. Your mentor seemed to be no ordinary man. And how may I be of service to you, Thorn Brennan? Within reason, of course. I'll be out of here, save my daughter, and look after my son. Go with rescue Gleaner. Mm. So she's in trouble after all, isn't she? Thorn, you know nothing about me. You never saw me destroy the town hall. There are no witnesses to my supposed selflessness and honor. I learn a lot just by watching people. Believe me. Besides, I know Ake quite well. Wipe that frown off your face, my big friend. Trust me, Hopper. If you'd been a scoundrel, he'd have never brought you. Mm -hmm. I've no idea what you see in me. Ake doesn't know me that well either. Well, whatever. Let's say I agreed to do it. What do I do if I find your daughter? Where should I even look? <clears throat> Take her to see Stock and Victim. He never quite been on friendly terms, and he wishes his grandchildren would well. come. He'll find my daughter, or at least some sign of her, in Ursus, close to where the last battle with the Ensigns took place. I think you're smart enough to figure out the rest on your own. Hmm. I hope it all works out for you. I can't promise I'll save your kids or get you out of this dungeon. You can rest assured that I won't harm you or your children. Well, that's encouraging. Sort of. Hmm. You have a knack for getting people's hopes up without promising anything, Hopper. Thorn, still ask your father in law for help. Quite a powerful man, after all. Mm. Not as powerful as the king. Besides, the prince's fate leaves little to hope for. It's too late to help. Okay, well, we go to the inn. Lock yourself in one of the inn's vacant rooms. Maybe you should really cast the spell? Something tells you that Thorn's death should be prevented. He used to be pretty good at sorcery. Still, shouldn't you think this through? When asking Kornzov for help, think about your ways of sorcery, think about whether you should leave things as they are, stop thinking and act. Let's think about sorcery. I've got some skill. A sorcery of this caliber will weaken you greatly. It's worth the cost. What am I asking Corazon? Corazon could help you, but he might also refuse or even deceive you. And if he helps, we'll be indebted to him. He takes his debts seriously. It'd be the last time lends you a hand. Okay, should we leave things as they are? If Thorn is so favored by the gods, then let them save him. True, there's something special about him. But is his fate really your concern if his troubles are of his own making? If they weren't really of his own making. Right, stop thinking and act. Do it. You'll have to put all the Ursus jailers to sleep and notify Thorn of your plans, lest he missed the opportunity to escape. It'll be tough, but the decision's been made. There's no going back now. You 
shut out the outside world and wave your sorcery, wholly focused on the task at hand. Once the deed is done, you notice the walls of your room are covered in frost. It seems you're losing your grip. Some of your powers leaked into the room. Teague starts knocking on the door almost immediately. Hey, Sir Rowley, is something wrong? The ceiling of the room below is covered in frost. I lost my balance, fell, and dropped a bottle of wine when I saw it. It's embarrassing, but I also shat my britches and need a new pair. At least I didn't cut myself. Stop at this instant, or I'm calling the guards. You've already delved into sorcery today, and casting another simple spell is second nature. My dear Teak, I'm already fast asleep. You've just had a bad dream. You've also been drinking raw water, which is why you shat your britches. The innkeeper calms down instantly. He'll only remember what you told him. I'm just having a bad dream, he says lifelessly. I had a knot in my stomach because I drank raw water. Sir Rowley has been fast asleep all night. A sudden headache makes you wince. You're lethargic. You should really go to bed. Having sent Teak off to mind his own business, you lie down and instantly fall asleep. 